Welcome back. Okay, so we are now going to create our first simple action. Remember, we saw in the last tutorial that an action is a function that executes a list of commands when certain conditions are met. We also learnt that an event is the precise moment that an object changes from one state to another, creating an edge which can be detected. The action that we are going to create is one that turns on a light on the layout in response to a feedback sensor sensing the occupancy of a train in a block. Now it's important to understand that the light doesn't turn on simply because the train enters a block. There is a chain of things that need to occur before the light will turn on. So we're going to try and recreate what is happening using an animation. We may then be able to better visualize what is going on. Here we have a section of track containing three blocks. This is the previous block and this is the next block. And in the middle here is our current sensing occupancy feedback sensor connected to the block where we want the detection to occur. When there is no train in the block that contains the sensor, the sensor will be off. But as soon as the train enters the block, the sensor turns on and remains on until the train exits the block. So here, the sensor was off as the train was travelling through the previous block. And as soon as the first conducting wheels of the train touched the track in this block, the sensor turns on and remains on until the last conducting wheels of the train exit the block at which time the sensor turns off. When we define the subcondition for the action, we can select which edge we want to use to trigger the action. We can test for when the sensor turns on, or we can test for when the sensor turns off. For the action that we are creating, we will be testing for when the sensor turns on because that is precisely when the train enters the block. When that test for the subcondition becomes true, which is when the edge is detected, we can use that to trigger the execution of the action. Therefore, the sequence would be like this. Here we have the same track set up. And then down here, we have this diagram representing the conditions tab and the execution tab. In the Conditions tab, we have the test for the on event, and that feeds into our or subcondition. 
Remember we said that by default, the subcondition would be using the OR operator. Even when we have no operator defined in the actual condition, it will default to this OR condition. So we have the feedback being fed into this test which in this case is testing for the on edge and then that feeds into our OR subcondition and remember the OR operator here just means that if any of the inputs are true its output will be true and then when that output is true it then triggers the execution of the commands and in this case our command will be to turn on this light. So when the train is traveling along the previous block here as we're seeing here the sensor the feedback sensor will be off but as soon as the wheels, conducting wheels on the train touch the track, the sensor turns on. Assuming we have set no delay in the feedback settings or in the interface settings. If we open the interface editor here, you'll see down in here that globally for the layout, there is zero delay applied to the switching on of the feedback and there's a 250 millisecond delay when turning off a feedback and that is the default setting applied globally. If we look at the individual feedbacks we can also set an individual delay for that particular feedback and by default it is uh, grayed out. Whilst the train was traveling along the previous block here the signal going into our test is showing that the feedback sensor is off so the output of our test will be false. It is not on. And the output of our OR condition will then also be false. Because an OR condition will be true when any of its inputs are true. In this case it would be false so no command is triggered and our light remains off. As soon as the wheels touch the block here the feedback turns on we get our edge. That edge is fed into our test. The test now becomes true and because we're, we have only got one input to our OR gate it will then become true and that will then trigger the execution of our command which is to turn on the light on our layout. So as you can see there is a chain of things that need to occur to turn on our light but ultimately it is the condition being met here and becoming true which triggers the command to turn on the light. It is not simply the event of the feedback turning on which turns on the light. All of these other things need to also occur. Okay, good. So now that we hopefully have a better idea 
of what we want to achieve. Let's see how to create it in an action. But before we can do that, of course, we need a light on our layout that we can turn on. So let's create that light. We go up to the switchboard editor and then we select the location where we want to place our light. Let's put it in this square here. And then we go across to the menu on the right and double click on our light to place it. And then double click on the light to open the editor. We'll give it a name, L1. Uh, the type is an on-off type of light. We need to give it uh, an interface. We'll give it an address of, let's say, 101. And then we can click OK. And our light is now in the accessories list here and we can click apply and save and exit and now we have a light on our layout so now we can create the action and we do that of course by opening the actions editor click new to create a, a new action and then give it a name which we will call light on and in the condition tab we create the first condition by clicking the append button by default the or operator appears now we could delete that line and it would still default to using the OR operator, as we saw in that block diagram. Um, but we'll leave it in there just as a reminder to us that the OR operator is in use. And then we can click Append to add our first condition underneath. Our condition will be to do with the feedback sensor, remember. So we double click on the field and down here we select feedback. In the drop down menu for the feedback, we select the feedback that we want to monitor. We're going to use self siding. And then in the state, we select the state or the edge that we want to look for or to test for. And in this instance, we want it to be on, don't we? For when the train first enters the block and triggers the feedback sensor. So that is our condition. It consists of one subcondition, which is having a look at this feedback sensor called FBSS and testing for when the feedback turns on. When the feedback turns on this condition then becomes true and that triggers the execution of the commands shown in the execution tab. Currently of course there is nothing in the tab so we need to click append to add a field we want a command that will turn on a light so we double click in the type field and then scroll down to the light and then from the light drop down menu here we should be able to select the light that we just created l1 with address 101. So we click on that. The state we want the light to be in when it receives the trigger is for it to be turned on. So in this instance we move it fully over to the right 
so that it is at its fullest brightness and then we can click apply. As soon as we click the apply button the action is created and listed on the left here and we can see that it is ticked as active. So the action is now already running in the background. We can then close down the window. So now when a train enters self-siding it turns on the feedback sensor which then makes the condition true or to be met and then that will trigger the execution of the command to turn on the light. It is the event of the feedback sensor changing state from off to on that iTrain detects and that makes the condition true which triggers the execution of the action. Now we can simulate that by simply clicking on the feedback sensor. When I click on it we see the action has been triggered and the light turns on. But watch what happens when I turn the sensor off. The light remains on. So why is that? Well, that is something else that we have just learnt about actions. Depending on the object that we are controlling, when the action is triggered, the object is latched on and remains on until we turn it off again. The reason is because actions are an if-then statement and not an if-then-else statement. In other words, the action is not saying if this feedback sensor is on, turn on the light or else turn off the light. The way we turn it off is by creating another action to turn it off. So let's do that quickly. We'll go up to the Actions Editor and instead of typing new, this time we could use the copy command. With the last action selected here, when we click copy, we then create a, a copy of that action. This is a good method to use if you've got a very complicated action and you just need to make some minor adjustments to it. So with this selected, we type in copy and we give it a new name. Let's call it light off. And this time all we need to do is change the state to off and the execution will be to turn the light off. So we just move the slider all the way to the other side, click apply and then we see we have now got another action for the light off. When we turn the sensor back on again, you see it's still on at the moment. We turn it on, nothing changes because it was already on. But this time when we turn it off, the light turns off as well. And when we turn the sensor back on, the light comes off and on. So what we have created is two actions one which instigates the turning on of the light when the train enters the block and we're using this edge and then another action 
which turns the light off when it exits the block and is instigated by this edge. OK, so depending on the object that we are controlling, we may have to have two actions, one to turn it on and one to turn it off. But that is not always the case. There are some objects which automatically turn them off anyway, such as a sound file. A sound file automatically turns off after it has completed playing, so there's no need to have an action to actually turn it off. Now note that we did nothing to physically start the action running. The action has been active and running in the background as soon as we created it. And the action triggered and executed automatically as soon as the feedback sensor changed state. And the condition was then met. We can deactivate an action by going into the editor and then unticking it. So if I untick the on, this time if we go down and press the feedback sensor, we see that the light remains off. Let's put it back to on again. And then it is now working again. So we can stop and start an action by making it active and inactive using the editor for the action. But there's actually a better way that we can control the actions and that is by adding a special action button to our layout. And that is the subject for our next tutorial. So hope to see you then. Thanks for watching and if you like what you saw please tick the like button. See you next time. Bye for now.